If you spoke to any Arsenal fan at the end of 2019 and told them that Granit Xhaka would not only still be at the club in three years' time, but would also remain one of their key leadership figures as they chased down a first Premier League title since 2004, they would have said you were crazy. That October, it looked like there was no way back for the Switzerland international at the Emirates. One of many disappointing home performances under Unai Emery, in which the Gunners threw away a two-goal lead to draw with Crystal Palace, was marred by a confrontation between Xhaka and the Arsenal fans, who cheered and celebrated his substitution on the hour mark and were met with an angry response from the player. Xhaka sarcastically gestured for them to cheer even louder, cupped his ear to the crowd and appeared to swear at them before ripping off his shirt and going straight down the tunnel. Named club captain by Emery just a month earlier, his relationship with the fans was seemingly beyond repair. The situation was so severe that the player's father, who had always motivated Xhaka to keep going in the face of adversity, convincing him to stay at previous club Borussia Mönchengladbach rather than return to Switzerland when he wasn't getting any game time, conceded that his best option was to leave the Emirates altogether. But while manager Emery was sacked that November, Xhaka eventually returned to the side and decided to stay in North London, becoming a mainstay under Mikel Arteta and eventually regaining the trust of the fans too. 2022-23 has been his most impressive season yet. At the time of writing, he has yet to miss a Premier League fixture and has already topped his best ever tally for goal involvement in a league campaign. And following the Gunners' 3-0 victory away at Brentford back in September, which marked the side's sixth win in seven to keep them top of the league, the travelling supporters sang Xhaka's name for the first time since that infamous afternoon in October 2019. The midfielder was so moved by the gesture that he recorded a personal message for the fans from the pitch after they had left the stadium. But how did he go from villain to hero at the Emirates, and why has he been so important to Mikel Arteta's project? Today's FD Explained is dedicated to Granit Xhaka. The story of Granit Xhaka's redemption starts midway through the 2019-20 season, when Mikel Arteta was announced as Unai Emery's permanent replacement as Arsenal head coach. One of his first jobs was to resolve Xhaka's situation at the club, with the player ready to leave the Gunners and start a new chapter in his career. Arteta had other ideas. The incoming manager felt that retaining the Switzerland international was important to him achieving his goals at the Emirates, and quickly called a meeting to hear the player's side of the story. Xhaka informed him of his wish to leave, but after speaking with the new coach was able to envisage a future at the club. Despite having a contract on the table and ready to sign with another club, and even having suitcases ready for him and his family to leave London, he decided to stay, making the decision by himself after a follow-up meeting with Arteta. Despite initially being apprehensive about continuing to represent Arsenal, Arteta's vision for the club and the clarity of his plans ultimately convinced Xhaka. As he told the Players' Tribune in 2022, I like how he spoke with me, I liked how warm he was with me. Arteta had promised him that if he still wasn't enjoying the project after six months that he could leave, but Xhaka missed just two league games in the second half of the campaign and was ever-present en route to the FA Cup final where they beat Chelsea, securing the club's first silverware in over three years. But by the end of the following season, Arteta's project was still yet to fully catch fire, with the Arsenal boss coming under serious pressure after winning just four of his first 14 games of the season, form that saw his side sit 15th at Christmas. A much-improved second half of the campaign still wasn't enough to finish above eighth. And so it's not hard to see why a potential move to Roma, where a new project was about to commence under Jose Mourinho, was an attractive option for Xhaka, whose profile had been boosted by a superb European Championships, where he led Switzerland past world champions France and into the quarterfinals. He'd also had to deputise at left-back in the absence of Kieran Tierney in the final weeks of the 2021 season, on the eve of his 29th birthday, a move to Italy to play under one of the most decorated coaches in history was hardly a bad career choice. This time, Arteta was happy for him to leave, but amid a summer of big spending, Roma weren't willing to match Arsenal's reported €20 million Euro asking price, and with the deal off, Xhaka remained committed to Arteta's project, even extending his Arsenal contract later that summer. And with his renewed commitment to the Gunners came an evolution in his game. When he first arrived in the Premier League in 2016, then-manager Arsene Wenger described him as a box-to-box -box midfielder, 
owing to his engine, power and passing range, but he was only rarely deployed in that role over the next five years, often partnered with more attacking midfielders like Aaron Ramsey and Matteo Guendouzi, and expected to pick up a decent chunk of the defensive work at the base of midfield. First of all, this maximised the opportunity for him to make erratic challenges, with Opta revealing last year that only Sergio Ramos received more red cards across all competitions while playing for a club in the top five European league between 2012 and 2022. While Xhaka was given exactly 10 yellows in the Prem in four of five seasons between 17-18 and 21-22 as well, missing a total of 17 games through suspension during his Arsenal career. And it wasn't like he didn't arrive with a reputation, having received three reds in his final season at Gladbach alone. But it also limited his ability to aid the side's attack. In 2016-17, his first season in England and one in which he actually provided seven assists, Arsenal averaged two goals a game. By 2020-21, however, they were managing just 1.4 goals a game, their worst showing since 95-96, with their midfield often accused of being off-balance and unable to control games. But since the summer that followed that underwhelming campaign, Xhaka has gradually become a different beast, given licence to push forward and showcase the qualities Wenger raved about all those years ago on a week-by-week -week basis. A quick look at his sofa score heat maps indicates the 30-year-old's progression from unnatural number 6 to marauding number 8. In 2021, he was still spending a lot of time in his own box, covering the runs of left-back Kieran Tierney and at points shielding the defence in the right half space too. The following campaign, he began to push further forward, spending far less time in the defensive third and actually breaking into the opposition box. And so far this term, he is attacking more than ever, not only arriving in the box more often, but also onto the left wing to link up with Gabriel Martinelli. But how has this change occurred? Well, it's mainly down to the success of the club's recruitment. The arrival of Thomas Partey in 2020 gave Arteta an experienced defensive midfielder who had spent half a decade playing in a highly disciplined Atletico Madrid side under Diego Simeone, although the Ghanaian ended up starting just 18 league games in his first campaign due to injury, meaning Xhaka was unable to spread his wings. The following season, however, saw Martin Erdegaard fully establish himself in the side after his loan move from Real Madrid was made permanent, and the Norwegian's work ethic off the ball helped to relieve pressure on the base of midfield, leading the squad for tackles in the attacking and middle thirds. And finally, the acquisition of Oleksandr Zinchenko last summer, perhaps the smartest piece of business of the lot, has given the side one of the most tactically versatile fullbacks in the game, with the Ukraine international able to move into midfield and allow Xhaka even more freedom to join the attack. And Xhaka's numbers back this up. He is now creating more chances in league play than at any point in his career, while his 1.1 shots per 90 is his best average since 2017-18. While he's distributing from deep less than before, with his 4.9 passes into the final third by far the lowest of his Arsenal career, his 7.8 progressive passes per 90 still ranks him in the top 8% of midfielders. But more notably, he is now receiving tons of progressive passes too, ranking in the top 7% of midfielders in this metric as he becomes a passing option for players putting the ball into dangerous areas. As a result, he also ranks in the top 8% of players in his position for touches in the attacking penalty area. That's not to say he is perfect. Xhaka hasn't scored since October and has registered just one assist so far in 2023. With Arteta keen to increase the side's goal output from midfield, he will need to contribute more consistently if he wants to hold down his place in the long term, with Fabio Vieira, Emil Smith-Rowe and even Leandro Trossard all options if the manager wants to pick a more naturally attacking squad member to play the role. But it has nevertheless been an extraordinary transformation for a player who was not only misunderstood as a footballer for so many years, but also as a person. His ill fated captaincy was on the surface a sign of a player who lacked the ability to lead, despite the fact he had been named Mönchengladbach's club captain at just 22 and held the same position for his country. News at the start of this season that Arteta had made Xhaka vice-captain to Erdegaard showed that he remains an important leadership figure within the Arsenal dressing room, arguably the most vocal player at the club, who has always had a reputation for working hard on the field and in training. It's fair to say there are far worse role models out there. And with reports that talks have commenced over a new contract which could keep him at the Emirates until 2026, it seems Arteta is keen to keep him around even if he isn't starting every game by then. As recently as last season, when he was asked by The Athletic about his recovering relationship with the fans, Xhaka said, I don't believe we will be best friends. If he can help deliver that all-elusive title, then that answer may need to be revisited. 
So that was our video dedicated to the redemption of Granit Xhaka, but what have you made of his performances this season and how important has he been to Arsenal's title push? Let us know in the comments below. And also let us know if you want to see us do any similar videos on other players. If you enjoyed this, please leave us a like as always and subscribe to Football Daily if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.